Yeah, merci. Bonjour. Uh, I would like to thank you, especially the organization, to make this amazing gathering. Uh, it's my second battle match. Uh, I was in Berlin for the first time, and it was an amazing organization too. So it's great to be part of this. Uh, gatherings. Uh, I, I have not a technical background. I, I know a little bit about digital television and radio. I, w I started my activism with the free radio 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, my background is uh, social science, uh, doctorate in anthropology, postdoc in communication and anthropology. I'm currently based in London. And I'm part of this collective, Cool Lab, which is a collective uh, established in 2017 in Brazil. We are these eight people currently working uh, to deploy community networks around the country. We started in 2017 because of the Mozilla Foundation. They, they gave us, uh, we, we won the most novel prize, so $30,000. And we, we made a public call in Brazil to ask for communities to who wanted to be connected. Half of our population is not connected to the internet. We are 200 million people. 100 million is not connected. So yes, and community networks are a bit in a motto now, a moment. And uh, yes, this is Bruno. Uh, he presented the project in uh, New York, I think, to, to the Mozilla Foundation. This is Yuri and Marcela, who are both now our representatives with the APC program on community networks. We are selected with Alter Mundi and other groups, uh, four groups in Latin America. So we are now part of this community networks international. Uh, you and Marcela so are now full time de dedicated to this project. They live in Monteiro Lobato in Sao Paulo. It's our best uh, example of uh, how to deploy community networks because they are really involved in the, the grassroots communities. They're, so they are, so our best case is in Monteiro Lobato. We have deployed eight community networks in Brazil so far. With, uh, I mean, the amount of money we, we received, it's, uh, it was what we could do at the first time. And six of them are more or less working. Two of them are down because of the satellite connection. It's too expensive. So they started with satellite connection, and now it's not connected anymore. In, in Pará, the north of Brazil, uh, where I was one of me and Troyan, the researcher, the developer we have, uh, the most experienced one, uh, we went to Pará to deploy also a community network. We started with a very nice example of a mesh network with 10 routers running for most, uh, almost 1,000 people. But then also the satellite connection was too expensive, so we have a local network able to run, but it's not really, we have other problems, local problems. I, I could, I mean, uh, go on with this. This is, so Marcela and uh, Adriano Belisario, who, who is a journalist and uh, he's also part of our group. Uh, he, he me, him, and Bruno, we most write the, the calls and so. Bruno and, um, is more tech, he, and me and, and, and Adriano are more into the texts. And uh, this is Henrique from the south of Brazil, and this is uh, Rodrigo Pedro from Sao Paulo. So Troian and Henrique from south. Bruno is in Spain now. Uh, Adriano is in Rio, and uh, Marcela and Yuri are in Monteiro Lobato, Sao Paulo. This is our group, we are a horizontal collective, and uh, yeah, we are trying to improve our activities. More people can I join us in, uh, in the future because as, you, as I, I tried to introduce, we are talking about uh, a huge effort to deploy community networks in Brazil, so. And uh, yeah, and we have this collective approach. I mean, we are really open to to new people. Um, my presentation here, I would like uh, to, to give you as, a, as an invitation. Uh, we are starting our work in, uh, in the Amazon. I, I know the Amazon for uh, 20, almost 20 years, 18 years. I have been traveling a lot. I'm anthropologist, so my colleagues are anthropologists. And, uh, and I have never really worked uh, with indigenous people in this sense of uh, deploying technologies and so uh, it was a kind of uh, respect, you know, I, I didn't want to include the people into this digital world, I was a kind of uh, afraid of the results. But uh, especially in this moment, uh, the current Brazilian moment, where the indigenous lands are really under threat 
and uh, we have a some very nice uh, and well-organized indigenous groups that really want to be connected. So if we don't push this technology to them, with them, I mean, commercial ones will do it, and uh, NGOs, and there are plenty of them trying to do it. And uh, so it's a kind of, uh, and to, to make it very clear, we are working directly with them. Uh, because of uh, some relations that I will explain, there's no intermediate, there's no middleman, there's n we have the direct connection with at least four ethnic groups, which I will present now. So I will talk about protected areas in Brazil, the current situation, deforestation increase, uh, which are very known, isolate indigenous groups, which is a kind of uh, a strange thing to, to engage with because um, people want to talk uh, all the time about, you know, the people who have lands and uh, how can we invade their lands and so, but everybody forgets about the isolated groups, the ones that are nomadic and they do not want any kind of content, contact with uh, white people. And uh, we are talking about the border between Brazil and Peru, which includes the problems with borders. So this is the specific indigenous lands in, is in the border between Brazil and Peru. And yes, the emergence of the Brazilian far-right government. The proposal, which is uh, my invitation for you as uh, developers and so, we would like to work in the West Amazon, and I will explain why. Uh, we would like to build communication, a communication belt, I, and I will show you in the map. It, this could be radio links connecting to monitoring and um, improve local communication. We're not we are not talking about you know providing internet for indigenous people. They they are not asking this. They are asking for local networks to improve their own communication. So they are really into this uh, you no know, organization movement. They they know what they want. They are very organized and uh, they they see the risks of being connected and be monitored and so. I could give you examples of threats and killings and lots of things. Uh, yes, there's a kind of uh, in interesting thing uh, as a researcher I would like to develop. This ethnic appropriation of technology, I mean, it's a different way to approach. We're talking about uh, oral people, people, the tradition of uh, it's oral. So it's uh, voice. Uh, video, photo, no texts. <laughs> so, I mean, it's in, in terms of research, it would be interesting to, to, to think what kind of apps, what kind of development could be useful for this specific ethnic group. And with this research, we could be really be useful for illiterate people and other people, I mean, in rural areas. So this is a kind of example that if we succeed, could be multiplied in other Brazilian and other global areas. We are talking about, I mean, rural areas in the, around the world. And uh, yes, and something that I'm really concerned about since I was, uh, I mean, 15 years ago, I was part of a group that uh, developed uh, the Brazilian public policy called public um, cultural hotspots. We were developing the idea of producing multimedia content through free software. It was the public, uh, the first public policy. It was very known to us during Gilberto Gil's uh, ministry. And uh, as an activist, uh, we were a group of activists and uh, we were invited to join the government. Of course, we went in, we went out, and then, but it was a nice experience. Uh, this, is, this is known as uh, one of the most important public policies in Brazilian history. And we developed like 600 cultural hotspots they were producing with, uh, you know, Audacity, Cineleja, and uh, other free softwares to produce multimedia. We were recycling computers at that time. And uh, it was a, I mean, it was a different vision on what the digital can be. So we would like to keep, and uh, this, this specific ethne uh, I will talk about, they were one of, the, one of the first indigenous groups selected through public call to receive this multimedia kit, and they still have it. So they are really into you know, maintenance and they, they value the, the equipment they have. So we are not introducing computers, we are not introducing multimedia. They are producing with the first multimedia kit who was developed uh, in 2005. Yes, the methodology is data research. I will show you some data. Participatory design, we keep contact with them. Uh, technical visit, it's the Amazon, it's difficult to get there. So technical visit, we, when you do this in Southeast or so, we, we, we have like two days, three days is enough. In the Amazon, we are planning seven days immersion for technical visit because then we have to go down the river and it takes one day to access you know, community, so it's really difficult. 
Uh, yes, and everything we do, we, we will provide them with the document, so they will translate in their own language, and they will do, they are very organized, so everything is, is done through assemblies, so this project might be approved, uh, approved before we do anything. Yeah, and uh, we plan, yeah, multiple immersive exchange. Uh, when, I, when I say exchange, it's, uh, it's because we do really uh, want to learn from them as a, as a, I mean, they have a total different cosmology. We are talking about specific these groups. Uh, they, 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 don't, they don't even have the, the common shaman figure we, because all of them, they are taking uh, ayahuasca, so all of them are kind of shamans. So even among the indigenous groups, they are kind of different. They belong to two branches of um, language. They are Pano language and the Ashaninka, which are the main group we are trying to work with. They are Arawak uh, branch, so they, they don't even speak uh, the same language in the same region. And, uh, and they are different size of uh, groups. The Ashaninka are 100,000 people, it's one of the biggest uh, groups we have, I mean, in Brazil for sure, maybe around the world, 100,000 in the border between Peru and Brazil, so the border just cut them in the middle, so we will see the land in a map. And, uh, and the Xanenawa are a small group close to Feijó in Acre, uh, so the internet, to bring internet to them is really easy because the internet is there, so the so technical solution is already provided, they want uh, internet, so we will do this. Uh, Troyan has designed already how to use cell phone and distribute a local network to them. They have eight, nine small villages, so we can connect them. It's very easy and cheap. Technical solutions, as you know, but uh, I'm learning this, uh, are not the, the, the worst part. The towers are the worst part, the, how to avoid uh, the humidity of the, the, the trees. So you have to have really tall towers, and this is the most expensive thing <laughs> we have to provide them. Routers and the cables, and uh, this is not the big issue. Yes, so this is uh, the plan for this presentation. We start with these protected areas in Brazil. So everything you see in green, they want to take away. It's 30% of the Brazilian territory, which means uh, Europe. The territory of Europe is protected in Brazil by law. 600 units, 14% belongs to indigenous lands. This was demarcated lands uh, since uh, Lula government and Dilma. During Dilma and, and Lula, I'm not defending them as, uh, you know, as a, they were really protecting indigenous people, but it's not the case, uh, it's not as worse as it is now. So it's, it's really an aggressive movement, movement against indigenous lands because they feel, they say, this is the official map from uh, Embrapa, which is the Brazilian enterprise responsible for agriculture. So they say this is improductive. We have to make it productive. And, uh, and, they, and minoring is the main issue with the indigenous lands because they have gold uh, and other minerals because there are ancient lands I mean, protected by indigenous people. Niobio, for example, Niobio. 98% uh, of the available Niobio is under the feet of the Anomami people in Horaima. So they are already invading. And the biggest exportion of, uh, exportation of uh, gold recently, it's from Horaima, 160 kilo from gold, but there's no official enterprise in Brazil allowed to export gold from Horaima. So it's really, you know, the, the last months, uh, it's a kind of, uh, uh, red, uh, you know, emergency light claiming. And the total area, so we have 600 units, uh, indigenous units, as you can see, it's mostly on the, in the Amazon. We are going to work precisely uh, more or less here. I will show you the map. But yes, so what is green? They want it, uh, I mean, brown. This is the most recent map on we have. This is from Carolina Comanduli, which is an anthropologist. She's doing her PhD on the Ashaninka people in the, in the border, the, the people we want to work with. So this is the most recent 2018, uh, the, the map on deforestation. And uh, we are going to work here. This is the idea. So uh, as you can see, this, uh, it's really coming. All of these areas, these green areas, are protected by law. So uh, it's increasing, and uh, especially in this area. And uh, on the other side, it's even worse. But uh, in this area, in the, in the core, in the middle of the Amazon, it's really, 
difficult at this moment. This is the people I was telling you. Nobody talks about them. And uh, this is a very recent map, isolated tribes, the, the white spots, people that are nomadic, they, don't, they are not fixed, they, they are just changing and uh, place. So in this area, particular area, we have large amounts of groups. I mean, they are really nomadic. And uh, how can we deal with them? So that's why we are talking about this uh, communication belt, because we are not going to deal with them. They don't know, they, want, they don't want any contact. But these indigenous here, they are kind of organized and they are able to help protecting these other nomadic. Uh, they, because they, they already uh, occupy the official lands, because they get in, they get out. So everybody knows about them. They are small groups. I mean, in this area, as I told you, it's 100,000. I will show you the next map. Uh, so just to show, so in this area, we have more or less 50% of all the isolated tribes in the Amazon. So we are talking, and the frustration is really coming because they are not that organized, they are not that powerful to resist. And, but these indigenous groups, more organized, they are able to help them and help themselves. Yeah, this is the official map from the Brazilian. Uh, so I, I, I would like to show you because it's a kind of funny. I'm talking about 100,000, and in the map they show beyond 5,000. So beyond 5,000 we have here, and it means 30,000 or 40,000. And uh, yeah, maybe we have 5,000 here with the same number. And here and here, so these big spots are beyond 5,000 people. So I mean, it's really a concentration of uh, huge amounts of indigenous people, and they are really recognized. This is the last map from 2010. So I mean, the data is really, I mean, not, uh, not reliable. And uh, yes, so again, we would like to work in this area, but as I will show you, both these areas are connected to the isolated tribes. So isolated tribes are here, more or less. We would like to work here and maybe build a communication belt around here and later here. But it takes time, it takes efforts, it takes money. And uh, so, yeah, back again. We, were, we are here. These uh, lands are isolated tribes from Acre, so this is used by isolated tribes. So even the government recognized them. So they're around this river. Also this river, Jordão, uh, Arara, Jordão is here. Arara is the division between this area and here. Yeah, so we have some data. It's uh, really, you know, I mean, we know where to do it. We know how to do it. And we're looking for funding to start deploying this. The proposal would be, as I told you, they don't want internet connection. They want offline connection. They want, you know, they want to carry their own data. So this is a kind of uh, thing that would be interested to, interesting to hear from you and learn from you. Uh, Troyan and uh, Luandro are both uh, connected, developing this idea of a, a layer on a mesh network so people would uh, care their own data and cryptograph it. And uh, when you you meet the other one, you address the precise message to these people. So they will care their own, everyone's data, and when you meet the other one, you send the data that these people would be addressed. This is the, the idea, the original idea. It's not our idea. This is their own demand, and I will show also the map where they want to do this. The local network, exchanging voice, a video, and... Um, and pictures, they are really nice photographers. The, the aesthetics is really amazing. So this is a kind of part of the research. I mean, how, to, how can we learn from them? I mean, aesthetically, I mean, it's beautiful. And uh, yes, I'm into this telecommunication thing. Uh, uh, short, short waves and, uh, would be really useful to connect long distance uh, cities like Marechal um, Tamaturgo, um, Cruzeiro do Sul, and the capital, because they are so organized that they have different offices. So they have representatives in these uh, main areas. So to connect these people with the, the other ones really far away, short waves in the Amazon would be useful. And, uh, but then it's a bit uh, expensive to, to buy this equipment, but that's the, 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 the plan, to mix technologies. Short waves, if it's really close, for example, in Feijó, close to the, the main area, FM radio would be nice, because then it's not that huge amount of trees and so, it's all, uh, just to cross the border of the uh, river. So FM, low power FM, uh, I mean, I mean we, they could install it really, really easily. So this is uh, also part of our research to mix technologies. I could develop a little bit more on digital television 
because uh, we think Brazil has not migrated to digital television until now, and they have no plans to develop, to, to migrate until 2023. But as you know, digital television is a very powerful tool to send data to. I mean, it's 20 megabits per second, and it's broadcasting. So for tribes isolated to connect more you know, people around their area, could be a, a kind of experiment. We don't know how could it be used. Also because in Brazil we have this middleware, the Jinga middleware, which is free software. So digital radio connected to digital television, digital radio through shortwave, sending data connected to a Jinga middleware, could be an app that connects to your small television. They don't know this, you know, flat screens. They don't have anything of this, but they have small screens. Everyone has a small screen. And uh, yeah, so it's a kind of experiment that uh, could be interesting to, to develop uh, with you developers and think the, the, the how it could be useful and uh, this is innovation. Yeah, specifically this group, 100,000 people in the Amazon. They dress like this, uh, it's a bit cold, they are on the mountains, they are also in the, in the close to the rivers and uh, they inspire a lot, you know, fashion, and uh, they are really diplomatic. They are, they are all around the world. I mean, uh, the last time I heard about Benki, which is the diplomat from the Ashaninka, he was in New York. And uh, they are really, you know, into this movement of uh, trying to get some help to Brazil. Recently, I mean, Haoni came here, he met Macron, and, uh, and uh, I mean, it's a kind of desperate moment in, uh, now because, uh, yes, it, they are really pushing hard on the indigenous lands and uh, we are talking about massive killing and the uh, poisoning and uh, because uh, to do the minoring thing it's destruction totally and uh, also deforestation uh, it's increasing really quickly and the satellites monitoring it's the worst uh, i mean the last month was i mean the biggest amount of deforestation we have ever have, have ever had since the beginning of the monitoring so this is not, uh, you know, a speech or this is happening and uh, that's, that's why we use this uh, task force. We, we are not able to do any task force, it's a kind of, I mean, <laughs> but uh, we, could, we can do some, we can try to do something and uh, in the long term also, we're not talking about, oh, we're going to do this next month. This is an ongoing invitation. If any one of you would like to help, would like to join us, would like to make a visit, would find your own ways to do it, you are welcome to join us. I mean, it's not only the Ashan Inca, the Ashan Inca is this huge group, we are already connected, but we have also other groups. I mean, uh, the Kashinawa group, which is a neighbor of this group, we have the Shanena, which is a small group, we have the Yanomami, a very good connection. Um, Back again, I'm talking about the direct connections we do have now with indigenous people. I'm not talking about, you know, we know an NGO that knows, the, no, no, we have connections with these people. We have letters from them inviting us to go to their lands. So we are not, you know, we are guests of these people because they trust us. They want us to develop with them technologies. <coughs> yes, finally, the area. So this is the area. They go from Peru to, because as I told you, they are divided. So there were 100, so, but they have families here, family here. So they have to walk here. So they take a boat and they go to the main area. So they want to establish a network here to protect them, to exchange data, because in this, there's small villages here. So this idea of a layer of a mesh network, for them it's useful to do it here along this uh, river. They're also in this area here to do, to come to Soweto. So we are trying to connect between borders so this mesh network would be useful. From here to here, we are talking about more or less 30 kilometers, 25 to 30. So it's possible to do radio links. We have already this study, we have the software that has uh, uh, made the, the, the geography. So we have to go beyond the trees, as you know, because it's really tough to, to avoid the, you know, the humidity. And uh, the most expensive thing, as I told you, is the tower. But they do have towers in the Apucha, which is the center of the, the communication, because they have installed this a long time ago. So they have internet in here. So we could improve their signal. It's a satellite connection. So we could really improve their signal and, uh, yeah, and share and may make a radio link until here and until here. So it's 25 plus 25, 30. So I have two big. Uh, radio links and then to connect until the, the frontier. Actually the frontier is here, sorry. 
and the, but then this area is also Ashaninka people. So they w they really want to connect these people with these people with these people. So this is their official land, demarcated, and uh, it belongs to them for a long, long time. Yeah, no, I mean, it's the end. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, almost the last slide. I have one more slide, I think. Again, this is the area, some rivers. This is the, um, yeah, the protected area, just to give you an example of what is a protected area in Brazil. Everything here with these lines is a protected area and is under threat. I mean, they are really taking the woods and uh, gold and everything from there without any permission. And back again, this is the area where we have, this is the official land of the Kashinawa, the other group. So we have Ashaninka here and here, and we have this Kashinawa here and also up. This might be the last slide. Yes, to give also the other example, this is the main uh, city that uh, to arrive in this area, it's Cruzeiro do Sul. So it would be distant like uh, maybe 90 kilometers. So it would be possible to make a radio link or use short waves to, to make communication. And then back again, the Marshal Tomatu, who is also a very important city to, to arrive by airplane. And also we would like to establish a communication between this city and their future, which is the, this main organized village off sea with a tower. So to do the radio links, it's easier to do because they have already the infrastructure there. I mean, that's it. Uh, I leave you contacts. Uh, we are Coolab. You can send us an email. Uh, technically, if you would like, uh, Troyan has developed the, the, all the design of this, uh, this current project. I mean, he's into the details. He could give you, provide you with a lot of technical information. And uh, Luandro is also part of our team. He's developing, he's the coder that he's, has, he's developing uh, really the, this idea of uh, this internal mesh, this layer, the cryptography and so. Yes, and uh, I'm available also if you'd like to get in contact. My pleasure. In this in this area, you talked about small screens. Do they have phones? Do they have computers? Uh, how do they power it? Um, is the technology uh, on all the time? Is it uh, off? I, I want to know. Thank you so much for your question. I forgot to say that yes, part of this research is really how to develop sustainable technology. So we are using solar power, uh, solar panels, and the water. Uh, energy. So this is both part of Trojan's research into this. You are totally right. They use phones, mobile phones. Uh, uh, Mami, they have a lot of iPhones and uh, yeah, they're using this to record medicinal plants and so, and they're really exchanging between them. And uh, yes, and when they are connected, they use the common platforms we know, you know, the, the proprietary ones. But they have mobiles a lot. And they have computers, mostly laptops. Uh, the Ashaninka, they have some of, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but they have some. But mobiles are everywhere, everywhere. They are really easy to access. That's why we are really talking about these mesh networks, because also FM radio would be interesting if it is, uh, because uh, all mobiles, they have FM receiver. So it's already something that could be interesting to develop. The Shanyanawa, for example, we are really working with this possibility of having them connected to the internet through mobiles, but also exchanging some voices when they are traveling using FM radio. The social project, um, it's different because it's not with indigenous people, but the Baobaxi project in Brazil, which was working um, especially with um, Quilombos, which are ex-slave communities in Brazil, like, um, and they had like a, like a similar idea of like connecting different um, regions without using like the internet, like, and like exchange. So I was wondering how you, like, are you including parts of it or will you be like, what, what, are, what are similarities? Yeah. 
That's it. Uh, yes, thanks for mentioning. I mean, Baobax is an amazing project. We are really close to them, Vince and all the developers. And uh, I know the, the groups that they are working with because we know each other from Campinas. So TC is the main master of this uh, urban quilombola network. It's the hugest, I mean, quilombola organization in Brazil, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, because I know also some Maranhão is also a very nice area to, to connect to, to Quilombola fighting. And uh, yes, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's the same principle with a different context. Uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's the only reason, but technologies are really close. And the, the idea of uh, offline is the same idea of Baobaxia. So, I mean, uh, in terms of technology, what uh, I think is different is this idea of cryptography and, uh, you know, carrying data when you meet each other. I think that would be the main difference between these two projects. But in principle, they are really close. And we are partners anyway. I mean, in the last cool lab camp we made, Vince came and uh, we are really collaborative projects. The last uh, event we made in Sao Paulo, yes, everybody's really, I mean, we are taking hands all the time we can. Uh, m maybe you talked about it at the beginning of your presentation, but uh, on the last slides you showed specific areas, and I was wondering why uh, would like the, those those specific geographical areas um, are trying to get connected to each other? Is it uh, related to I don't know managing resources or uh, help people uh, move? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I was wondering. Yes. Well, as I, I tried, I show uh, we have 600 indigenous land, so we are connecting to this specific land because we have a very nice connection. I, I forgot to mention Carolina Comanduli, which is the anthropologist connected to uh, the Ashaninka. Actually, she's married to uh, an Ashaninka because she started doing her PhD and she spent two years in the village. So she finally married to uh, the Ashaninka, and they have a son together. So she's really, I mean, that's why we have this direct connection with the, these people. And uh, and also what you mentioned is the the neighbors. So they are really because they they travel a lot, so they want to get in touch with the the ones that are close. And also because of this idea of making this uh, belt, this communication belt, because of this huge amount of isolated tribes, and because it's Acre, so I mean it will be the same logistics. So it's really tough to get into the Amazon. So you have one single place, and then after this we can spread in these different areas. It's far away, but in terms of the Amazon, it's, uh, I mean, it's better than going to different states or different capitals. So this is the main reason. But as I told you, I mean, the Horaima, the Yanomami are, are on the north side of this. They are really far away from this, and we have a nice connection to them. They have different problems, and uh, yeah, could be nice also to connect them in the future and be in touch with them as far as we get some funding. We are applying and uh, looking for collaboration. So you, when you build these links, uh, what what are you trying to? You said that you want to build a mesh network, and then you want to build cryptography on the top of that. Um, so I assume these people want to send messages to their final destination while they're on the boat, and uh, the towers are in the villages. So the villages are not the enemy. No, uh, they won't uh, won't like listen to what they are saying. So no. what are you trying to protect against? The border. So they if they have better communication between them. So they, they can say to the ones that are far away that there's someone coming to the border. So it's a kind of monitoring better and getting uh, improve their own organization because they don't have to travel all the way down. So they want to improve, you know, their um, yeah internal communication. I mean, to to organize things, to monitoring territory, and uh, yeah, plan better. I mean, these trips. Specifically in between Peru and Brazil, yes, it's a kind of tricky situation. It's violent because the, the, the leaders, they are under threat. That's why they demand this cryptographer system. So they really want to, when they are passing, walking. But so who, uh, who is the threat exactly? The leaders of the Ashaninka people. They are under threat of because of... Of uh, who? Ah, of, of the... Of who? 
Okay. So is the government the problem? Dealers and uh, ex, uh, international companies that want to explore their territory. I mean, okay. because it's really, he, it's really rich in uh, minerals, mostly gold and uh, yeah, things that uh, we use to to make mobiles, different minerals. Um, why does I want it to? What I want it to be of? So um, why do they want it to be offline? So to have the reason? And yeah, uh, because they they think they told us that uh, some when they, they have a kind of experience when people are online uh, is a kind of uh, it's not very the connection is not very virtual. I mean, people can get into pornography and get into you know buying things and get addicted to. And uh, so as uh, leaders of these communities, traditional communities, they really think, you know, online connection is not the best way if they're not, if they cannot control the access. So they really, they, uh, they say it's a kind of a cultural disaster. <coughs> they have already this evaluation. Uh, they said that yeah, to they us. Had, I know this group in 2009, so they had internet before. And that's how they asked for help for the government. They sent emails before. And that's why com the government went there and gave him, like them, the, the, this lab. So they they have been connected and they have internet in that region. So, but it seems that now ha they have a different way and they are thinking in a different way. So, yeah. Yeah. they used to have internet. Oh, sorry. <laughs>